Hey there guys, so uh, today, uh, unfortunately we weren't able to quite get the footage we wanted from going out and finding snakes. We didn't really find very much, unfortunately, but instead today we're going to talk about uh, insect diversity here at the Mad Mouse. And so, uh, some things to know about insects is uh, everyone knows they have six legs, that's kind of a big defining characteristic of them, and uh, they are probably the most numerous type of organism that we have. Uh, if you look at the number of bird species we have, it's about mm, almost 9,000. Uh, mammals, about 5,500 or so. Fish, you got 30, 40,000. But for insects, you have 1.4 million currently described species. So that is a huge number of unique organisms there. And so we're going to kind of talk about some of the defining characteristics of each of the uh, different groups of insects and then uh, kind of tell you about some of the families as well. So the first one we're going to be looking at are the Lepidopterans, which happen to be everybody's favorites. And so these are the butterflies and moths, which I have a nice tray of a few of our local ones right around here. So uh, most people can tell us that uh, moths and butterflies look very different. Moths typically are kind of dingy in coloration. They're a little more cryptic. They like to blend in. But if you look over in this one, we have some exotic moths here. This little guy right here, which looks almost like a butterfly, is actually a day flying moth. And so you can't always go by color, but how you can really tell is you look at the types of antennas. Moths are either going to have feathery antennas, like this Cecropia right here, or they're going to have kind of a pointed antenna, like this hummingbird moth right here. But what butterflies have, and if you look over at this guy right here, this uh, giant swallowtail, they have clubbed antennas, so they have a little kind of ball at the end of their antennas. So. I'm going to show you some of our local ones right here, tell you about a couple of the different families. And so these guys right here, which are nice, big, and showy, these are the swallowtail butterflies, uh, Papillionidae. Oh, I got dust on my cases here. And so you see they have these tiny little tails at the bottom of their hind wing. And so that's where the name swallowtail comes from. Probably one of our more common groups of butterflies are going to be these guys, the pyrids. These are the sulfurs. They're usually yellow, white butterflies. They eat your cabbage plants like crazy. So a pretty diverse species. My cabbages! My cabbages! This next little group that we have in the corner right here, these three right here, these are the nymphalids, the brush-footed butterflies. These are also probably one of the more uh, common groups. That includes now, anyway, these the monarchs. The monarchs used to be their own family, but they've been lumped into the nymphalids. And so right below this monarch, we have a queen butterfly. And a queen butterfly is uh, in the same subfamily, uh, so they look very similar to monarchs, but they're just a little bit different. Uh, kind of in this top corner, this really nice big moth. This is what is called the black witch moth. And so the black witch moth is pretty cool because it is our uh, our widest moth. It uh, gets a little bit wider than all the other ones. And right below it, we have a silk moth, which is a cecropia moth. All right. <laughs> Don't pay attention to those stink weasels I'm over there. I'm sorry, so they're very you distracting. distracted me. Oh yes, the ferrets are very distracting. I mean, look at this guy. He's got his butt sticking out of there and everything. He likes that. I just put that in there, and those guys would love that thing. He's so cute. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Anyway, we're on this guy right here. And uh, let's see. We also have over here this small little group. These little four right here. These are the lyceids, the lace wings. Uh, and one of my favorites are these blue ones right here. These great blue. I'm sorry, I said lace wings. The hair streak butterflies. Uh, these blue ones, the great blue hair streak, are probably one of my favorite local ones. So those are our some of our local butterflies. I guess a couple others in this case because there are some unique ones. This large one right here is one of the largest moths in the world. This is uh, Atticus atlas. I hold my hand right next to it. So very, kind of very pretty. Yeah, it's a big old female silk moth. And so most of these guys in here are silk moths. This smaller one right here is a polyphemus moth. This is what we'll find all around San Angelo. In fact, you'll probably find this throughout most of the United States. And let's see, it's got a little luna moth in the corner here. Also very pretty. Yeah, and then I think an even better looking uh, black witch moth down here at the bottom. Oh, yeah. It has a lot more pattern. These guys look like bats when they fly, so they're sometimes you find them out flying during the daytime, but that's usually because they're trying to find a place to hide. Alrighty, so those are our butterflies. We're gonna move on to my personal favorite group and probably the most successful group of insects. Uh, over 400,000 species, these guys make up by far the vast majority of all of the insects, about over 40%. And so these are the beetles. 
And we're not talking about the Beatles, but we are talking about Coleopterans. And so, uh, I'm particularly fond of this group right here. And so, uh, I want to show you the Scarabs first. Uh, the Scarabs definitely make up a huge number of our Beatles here. And these are kind of, uh, well, most of the Beatles we see are Scarabs. These are going to include the Dung Beetles, Jewel Scarabs, the Rhinoceros, and uh, Hercules Beetles and a lot of other different flower beetles that you probably have seen before. So up here at the top, this big male right here, this is Dynastes Tychus. It's the Eastern Hercules beetle. And this is what is called a primary male. If you look right next to him, there is a smaller male as well. And uh, the Dynasties, uh, the Hercules beetles, are really cool because they can change color based off of humidity. So this guy dried pretty well when it, things were pretty arid, and so he has his nice color. This guy dried a little bit more humid in a more humid environment, so he turned completely black. But he looked just like the other one until I got him on the pinning board. Next to that, you have a female of the Eastern Hercules, which don't look as pretty. And then you have a lot of these other little guys here. Below them is probably my favorite group of beetles, and these are the jewel scarabs, the Chrysina. We only have four species of them in the U.S. and only two in Texas, but they are by far some of the most beautiful beetles you'll ever see. And I, when I show people these, they get a lot of, they always mix them up with these little guys over here, which are the uh, green June beetles. Uh, they look green as well, but the iridescence just isn't quite the same. And I guess speaking of pretty beetles, we also have right below these Chrysina, we have what are called rainbow scarabs. And so the rainbow scarabs here, uh, these are dung beetles, so they're out looking for doo-doo, rolling doo-doo balls and things like that. <laughs> and so um, a lot of the scarabs we see around here are usually going to be some of our smaller guys. Uh, if you are in San Angelo, you probably have seen the very far end here, right below my finger. We got some glare from those lights. Yeah, I'm trying to counteract it. We have the uh, flightless May beetle. These guys are starting to emerge now, and they're basically just crawl all over the place. They cannot fly, and so, hence the name flightless. Right below them, we have what are now called uh, carabids, or the ground beetles. And these guys are active hunters, and so these are the fiery searchers, really pretty guys, and they smell really, really bad. <laughs> but uh, you usually see these guys out in the summertime. Now, if we go a little bit more below them, you can see some of our bigger ones. And then the very bottom of this container right here, we have, and I guess I could, the next one I'll take the lid off so we don't have as much glare going. Uh, I'm kind of curious about this guy with the huge mandible pincers so there. So those are called warrior beetles, and they are also ground beetles, and all the ground beetles are very carnivorous. And that includes, if you want to come right down this little row right oh, here, yeah. these are the tiger beetles, which are some of the fastest, for their size anyway, organisms that we have. And so, uh, tiger beetles, you can usually see on the edge of water. Uh, there's some really pretty ones, but uh, they used to be their own family, but they're now considered the ground beetles as well. So if you guys are into Animal Crossing right now, Mr. Maddox has quite the collection that you need. <laughs> <clears throat> if you look on this very bottom row, these are going to be what are called the darkling beetles. And so the darkling beetles, uh, these are what if you find mealworms and things like that, this is what these turn into. They're also called desert stink beetles or death feigning beetles. They usually also smell pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bad. So let me go ahead and grab our other beetle case. And I'll go ahead and take the lid off of this one so that we don't uh, have to worry about glare which it seems we have a fair amount of. So give me one second to open this case. These guys are sealed pretty tightly. Ooh, but not tightly enough. I got some bugs in here, some not bugs. Not good bugs. The bugs you don't want in your yeah. collection. Yeah, I wonder how those got in. So I gotta throw this in the freezer. All right, so now we have the longhorn beetles, which are pretty easy to identify because they do have such long antenna. Uh, these are uh, serambicidae. Right below them, and we do have quite a diversity here in Texas. Of Goodness gracious, beetles. I'll say I didn't even see all the beetles with such long antenna. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of them, but somehow I keep collecting them. Uh, <laughs> they're easy to collect. Uh, I guess some really pretty ones here. If you see this green one, this is a Bumelia borer. 
And watch your hands in there because these things break apart so easy. I will be careful, Mr. Right. Manix, I promise. We have these guys, which are the stag beetles, including this nice elephant stag, which uh, once you get a little bit north of Texas, you can start to find these guys. These really shiny ones are the buprestids, or the metallic wood boring beetles. And unfortunately, it looks like the bugs claimed one of my uh, scavenger beetles here. So the beetles that get into my cases are called dermestids. Uh, and they're a real problem. This is the first time I've actually ever seen them in here. So I got to throw this guy in the freezer. I'll probably throw all of them in the freezer after this. <laughs> but uh, these are the water beetles. We have uh, scavengers and predaceous. Uh, right below them, we have the, uh, oh, the, uh, carrion beetles. So these are ones you find on dead animals. Uh, this one in particular, my fingers next to is a burying beetle. Uh, they're known to collect dead animals and bury them. And then let's see, right below that we have the uh, net wing beetles. And if we go over here, this is one of my favorite groups. These are the blister beetles. And so the blister beetles, they have a chemical in them called cantharidin, which causes really strong blisters. Uh, so you don't want to mess with these or swat them on you. These are the meloids. And then we have our click beetles, which if you watched our last uh, Wild Wednesday video, we had a big click beetle in there like these, the idolators. And then this guy down in the bottom corner, these are what are called the ironclad beetles. And so these guys have some of the hardest elytras, or you might call it the shell, of any beetle. And they use a hammer to drive those uh, pins through them. No! Yeah, they're really tough. Wow! All right. So, I'm gonna and go ahead and... Here, one second, Mr. Maddox. Let me get a close-up of one of these little dermestid pupa casings. So if y'all happen to see any of these little things right there, that means that you've got something tasty around that they like anyway. Oh yeah, they eat anything dried and dead, so they target anything that's touching the ground first. So those are the ones that are easiest access to. If you have taxidermy mounts, those the dermestids also tend to go for those as well. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy in the freezer right now. So Mr. Maddox, can you explain what the uh, freezing process does for all of that? Uh, so the freezing process basically is just killing, I have a couple of other bugs in here at the moment, is basically killing anything that uh, shouldn't be alive right now. There shouldn't be anything living in these bug cases. Right, so okay. We're getting rid of anything that is alive. Start up here at the top of this case, which are the hymenopterans. So these are your ants, bees, and wasps. And a couple things about these, you can tell a bee from a fly, and oh, most of you are saying, hey, I know how to do that. But if you look down here, you'll see some flies that look an awful lot like a bumblebee. And so, uh, how you tell the difference is ants, wasps, and bees, they have four wings. Four wings, you can count them right up here. One, two, three, and four. Four wings and hind wings. If you look at flies, these guys only have two wings. They've lost their hind wings and instead have this little kind of little appendage called a halter sticking out. So that's an easy way to tell. But on to our uh, ants, bees, and wasps here. A couple notable families we have. If you've seen mud daubers and things like that, the thread waist wasp, uh, these guys, sphecids, uh, usually they can be pretty, pretty in coloration. This is a steel blue cricket catcher, really big guy. And uh, yeah, I guess most of the ones I see are usually black and yellow. Over here, everyone loves these guys. These are the tarantula hawks. These are the ones that go and predate. They're pompilids. If you can see the kind of curly antenna that they have, then that's how you can kind of tell this group. But most of them tend to be black or blue or green and with orange wings to stand out. Right below that is another wasp that everyone kind of freaks out about. This is a katydid. I don't know, it's not a katydid. I'm sorry, a cicada killer. So these guys fly around and they hunt the cicadas that are calling in the trees, like the dog day cicadas and things like that. And let's see, got a bunch of really weird families. The mutilids right here. These are the uh, velvet ants or the cow killers, another very painful sting. But these are wasps. They look like big fuzzy ants, but they're actually a species of wingless wasp. And so you can see right here is a boy, and then right here is a girl of the same species. So the boys do have wings and they fly around and look for look for a girlfriend. Alrighty, if we go down into our flies, I'll be honest, I don't catch very many flies, so I don't have a huge diversity. But what we have most of this is gonna be robber flies. And so robber flies are they sometimes called mosquito catchers. They fly around and they eat any mosquitoes that they might find, as well as any other flying insect. 
these ones right here that look like bumblebees. Well, sometimes they actually will eat bumblebees. Let's see. This one right here really looks like a bumblebee to me. Mm -hmm. And you can find these ones around San Angelo. Yeah, Asia. we have a few of them flying around here. Yeah. Let's see. I do want to point out this fly right here. This big guy. Uh, so this is a bot fly. And what a bot fly is, is it's a parasitic fly that lays its eggs. This one lays its eggs in uh, rabbits. And so they hatch and they get this giant maggot that feeds off of them. So it is a uh, pretty nasty critter. Luckily, we don't have very many human bot flies here in Texas. Now over here, we have uh, these are the neuropterist insects. And probably one of the most impressive ones is this guy right here, which is a male Dobson fly. Very large neuropteran. They have a uh, large mandibles they can't really bite with them too much i mean they might be able to pinch you but uh not so bad of a bite the girls have a much worse bite to them and oh, i don't have the girl over here are oh. are these those uh are these those guys you find in the water yes so these are helgramites yes this Helgramites. is a, a female right here i'm actually going to go ahead and put her in this case she was on a different board but uh, so females actually are the ones that can give you a really good bite and then we have little owl flies right here, which uh, they, they have clubbed antenna like a butterfly would, but they look kind of like a dragonfly, really weird oddball group. And then right below them we have the uh, scorpion flies. And so these scorpion flies don't quite have the really long uh, abdomen that looks like a scorpion tail, uh, but they do sometimes have those, but they are completely harmless. They have really pretty wings to them. Alrighty, so I noticed this video is starting to get kind of long and we're only uh, only partially way through all of our insects here. So what I think I'm going to do is I think uh, we'll do a part two to this video because there are some more insects to show you. So we'll go ahead and call this part one and we will catch you guys next Wednesday with part two. Alrighty guys, see you then. Bye bye.